So we've set up our loom, our little baby wolf loom, for pre-slaying. The number one thing I've done is checked my weaving record sheet for the number of heddles required for this project. And then I double check on my shafts the number of heddles that are currently on this loom. I write in pencil the number of shafts, I, I'm sorry, number of heddles on each shaft so that I always know I don't have to recount for every project. And that number is on page one of your weaving record sheet. I've placed the dowel rods on the loom and have secured them with rubber bands. I've also picked out my 10 dent reed that I'm going to use for pre-slaying. have my handy dandy reed hook. And then I've got my warp chain. And the very first thing I'm going to do is just untie that red tie that we had put on there and start unchaining. For the pre slate process. And we have several different trapeze configurations here in the studio. For these little X frame looms, I like using the ceiling mounted trapeze. And I have some Texol. Remember the end of our warp has two choke ties? Look at how wiry this linen is. So there's two choke ties there. There's also a strand that's tied from the beginning of our warping process. So I'm going to open that up. And also a strand at the end of our warping process. I'm going to open that up like so. Put this Texolve heavy duty cord through and instead of tying it, I'm going to slip it through the hole at the beginning. Then I'm going to put it up over the trapeze like so and hang a very light weight. This happens to be a two pound fishing weight. It may be too heavy for this warp. We'll find out. So I have our cross defined by that green tie. And which, by the way, remember how I only tied the upper part of the warp? of the cross with um, choke ties, not the bottom. There's our wonderfully defined cross right there. We're going to put our leaf sticks through there. Warp sticks. This is a little sidebar on the warp sticks. Um, many of the North American manufacturers send a warp stick or, or warp sticks with the loom that's not adequate for linen weaving. They're too blunt and square, so I like to use the Glamokra warp sti sticks that have an oval shape to them that allows the linen to flow nicely across those sticks. We're going to put one through here and make sure that we're not picking up the bottom at all. Beautiful. And I'll lay it across there. And then we're going to pick up our next one, which is right here. Lay it across. And then we're going to untie this one. And I've left in that green tie on the cross itself until I have these secured. I'm going to untie the next 
choke tie. And now I'm going to double check, double check, triple check, and I'm going to secure these two leaf sticks together. So now I'll double check again that all my threads are in the right area before taking out that green tie that indicates the cross itself. And all we have left is the purple counting strip. Counting yarn. There we go. Don't fuss a lot with this linen. It is sort of like the shining. It wants to do its own thing. And my warp width, according to our weaving record sheet, is eight and a half inches. So I took eight and a half inches on the measuring tape, folded it in half, and marked accordingly. Just drop my reed hook in there. And I'm going to start pre-slaying. And when pre-slaying, this takes the place of using a rattle. And for linen, this is extremely important. A rattle works okay. Pre-slaying is a gem. And so, in a 10 damp read, we have four per um, pass pair. And if anyone wants a, an oversight on pass pairs, just let me know during class and I'll go into it for you. I've removed the counting string because it was impeding my ability to pull everything out straightforward. So what I'm doing is using a 10 dent reed and pulling out the first pass pair and putting it in the dent that was indicated as the halfway mark. Now I'm going to skip a dent, go to the next dent, pull the next four through. Skip a dent, pull the next, pull the next four through. I've finished up pre-slaying, and it looks a wee bit like a bird's nest, but I have not taken my fingers and combed anything out. With this being linen, it's going to find its own way to where it belongs. So the one choke tie that's back here, that was our next set of choke ties after the cross area, I'm going to untie so that we can open up the warp a little bit. I also moved up the weight a little bit on the trapeze cord. And this goes hand in hand with the handout that you downloaded off of our website. And I'm not combing this, I'm just pulling it taut. Now I'm going to flip this read over. And you notice that all my reads here are marked with a center mark on both sides. There we go, that's our center. And I'm going to release the apron rod on the back beam by pressing on the braking mechanism. And I know that this is the center and it should line up with the center I'm marked on my read. Okay. So this is a narrow warp. So we're not going to be fussing with a lot of warp ends. So I would say 
that this is the center mark, like that. We can drop these Texolf cords that are at the end of the apron rod, if we so choose. There we go. I'd like to do that because our warp is so narrow that we only need the support on this apron rod to here. If we keep the apron rod tied up with this Texolve, it could cause some bowing of that rod. So there we are, separated. Pull this a little bit, pull it up. See how that opened up and I have nothing crossed over. There we go. So I'm going to take this apron rod, put it through there, slip on the Texolve cord, and I've marked my apron rods where they need to be marked, so where the cord goes. I'm going to do the same over here. Again, this is straightening out quite nicely without me combing my fingers through it. There we go. Now I'll take the time to straighten these out. Whoops, I missed one of the warp ends. Shame on me. So this is a good time to catch that. Put it back on. So, so I'm, I grabbed a small crochet hook. I just want everything straight on the apron rod. Nothing twisted. This is as straightened out as, as it's, this is going to get. Um, given the nature of linen, it's a little wiry and just ginky. And so we've got our warp secured onto that apron rod. So I, at this point, I am going to put a one pound, I'm uh, not one pound, one gallon container filled with water. I highly suggest water because occasionally these fall. Now I could start fussing a little bit because there's weight on there. There's substantial weight. There we go. And I can also untie this next choke tie since this is such a short warp. Look at how happy that is. And we're going to move our least sticks because we have to get them to the other side of this reed. I'm going to crank this up just a little. I'm going to untie these least sticks that are secured to the Dowel rods. I'm going to release the rubber bands. In this case, I had rubber bands on both sides of the loom, the back and the front. And I'm going to pull these out. Scary Larry. And there we go.
there. Now, this leaf stick that is represented right here, nearest the reed, has that shed defined on the other side of this reed by this apron bar. And if you want, you can turn this bar on end so it's a little bit more defined. You see? Same shed. So I can freely remove this, pull it out, turn this leaf stick on end, and I now have the cross. It's a little kinked. Defined right here. And I'm going to go right against the reed. Run this leaf stick down there. Voila. And now I'm going to pull out this existing leaf stick and put it here where it is defined by the apron rod. Okay. And retie. these leaf sticks, secure them. I've secured the leaf sticks. Now we're going to move the reed. If your reed is wider, it's a little tighter fit, but it still goes through there. And we're gonna put this in place and secure it within the assembly. But before we lock it down, we're going to make sure it's centered on the loom. And so what we do is take the last warp end, the last dent used, and measure out the width of the, the length of the beater assembly or the race, and make sure it's even on both sides, and it is not. So I keep measuring back and forth until it's even. Perfect. Now I will tighten this. There we go. That way it'll go on the beam. Dead nuts in the center. And we can start cranking on. Again, always on the baby wolf looms because they have this tension braking system, you need to depress the, the brake treadle in order to release the tension on that back beam. So I'm going to move these leaf sticks up as far as I can, start cranking without allowing the leaf sticks to go over the back beam. And look at how nice that's just sliding. And when you slide this, you don't want to pinch these together, but rather keep your fingers between those leaf sticks so you don't pinch that linen. I have some warp sticks here, and I place them on the beam. Crank. And I just place them Oh, I'd say like every other flat mark on there. And with linen, you want to put in the warp sticks every two revolutions. Not our normal three for wool and um, cotton. Move this forward, 
And I also put one on the tie-on bar for each revolution. The warp sticks are the way to go with linen. And we have a knot here. Why? I don't know. Okay. It's looking good. If you feel any resistance, check the warp in front of the reed. At this point, I'm moving the um, weight down on the Texolve cording. So that's one revolution. For some reason, my warp is not cooperating, which is great. It's a great learning opportunity. There we go. All I'm doing is pushing down on this warp. That's our second revolution, and then we can start with the warp sticks again this time staggering them on the beam. We've beamed on as far as we possibly can. I can, at this point, untie these two choke ties. I'm gonna release this Texolf cord that we used and our Warp has stayed continuous the whole time, so we can cut this at this point in time. And just take this in one inch increments. A good solid slip knot. Hang it off the back beam. all the way across. And I like to raise my shafts up so that the eye of the heddle is in a good position for me. To see without scooching down too far. And I take a copy of the threading draft. Put it here and I start threading from right to left. If you're left-handed, you can thread left to right. I have calculated how many of my heddles I, I, are required for each shaft according to our weaving record sheet. And I've moved them over to the center, um, breaking center here. At this point, I'm going to take the first little one inch section and by the order that's on the cross on the Lee sticks, I'm going to take the first four ends, bring forward the heddles that I need for this threading sequence. I'll hold this taut. fingers aren't working. So like this, driving it like a team of horses, keeping them taut. And then one, two, one, two. And I'm gonna repeat that sequence. Now, you may change the heddle types on your loom as long as one heddle type is on one shaft and a different heddle type is on the other shaft. 
This really comes in handy when you have more than four shafts on a loom. Like, um, let's say my eight shaft baby wolf, I always put an, an odd heddle shape on shaft five. So I know where I'm at within the threading sequence and shaft numbers. When you do this, the eye of the heddle needs to be at the same height throughout the entire warp sequence. That's all I'll say on that subject. So I am going to thread this from right to left because I'm right-handed dominant and I'll see you in a few minutes. Our threading took all of 30 minutes. It's pretty straightforward. Our warp is only eight and a half inches wide on the loom. So what I've done, this is a different technique that's the, from the technique that's in your handout that you printed out. This is one in which we lay the reed flat. And again, I grabbed my little dowel rods, secured them to the front beam with rubber bands. And I, our warp on the loom is eight and a half inches wide. So we need to measure four and a quarter inches from the center. Four and a quarter is there. And I'll just drop this in here momentarily. And again, I'll use that technique. And it's, we've got um, two per dent. And so what I'll do is same technique I used before, like uh, driving a team of horses. Whichever way is easier for you, please do it. And again, if you're right-handed, you would do this from right to left. Um, if you're left-handed, feel free to do it left to right. Once we have an inch completed, do an overhand or a slip knot. Nice and snug. And that's it. Okay, that took 12 minutes to slay the reed. And what I'm going to do. up. Clamp this down nice and tight. And I will pull out the cigar box or push it out. And then I will release the ratchet brake. Bring this over. And start tying on. And he goes, well, I'm just gonna do this. 
and you start in the middle and work out. It's very important that you keep your fingers moist while tying on linen. I'm going to split this little bundle, go over and under, and this is explained in your handout, so hopefully you'll get it right. This is very critical. There's no lashing on of linen. It's tied on the Swedish way. Put my finger there. Go under and under. And I work back and forth from the center. And on this side, I go just the opposite way, whereas here on this side, I did over on the left hand side under, and now I'm going to go over on the right hand side of that split. Hold my thumb there. Bring it through. Of course my hands aren't working. So I'm going to release the beater assembly like that. And again, I am going to remove these extra Texol cords because what happens is they cause a bowing because our warp is so narrow. And I'm gonna tighten this up so it's nice and snug. Good. Wet my fingers. And I'll work back and forth until this is all tied on. Okay, that took about eight minutes to tie on our little mini warp. Everything feels really great, nice and tight. And as I was tying on, I went back and forth, <laughs> hi Izzy, and cranked up the notches on the ratchet if need be. So now I'm going to finish off that knot with a half knot. And you notice my little bouts or uh, my little sections are even less than an inch wide and that is because the smaller the sections the easier it is to tie on and get the linen to behave. If I'm doing a warp in all singles, I'll do my sections in half inch sections instead of around three quarters. Now, I am ready for filler material, but instead I'm using what's called a magic string. And what I do is go under the first bout over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, and now I'm going to go over two because these are both uppers, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, and under. And that brings a lot of um, clarity to this warp. There's a little bit of veeing going on, but not much. And this stays permanently on my apron bar until it gets frayed or whatever. This is 12-6 seam cord. And I just do a slip knot at this end so that I can reuse it. 
a great technique. Here we go. Okay. I'm just double checking all my dents, double checking my sheds, but nothing's tied up properly yet, so, but everything looks nice and clear. Great.